What's going on? Don't unfriend me, nation. Good to have you here. I was thinking about the hypocrisy of Democrats and how they say one thing and, and do another. And when you look at the systems of government and all the governments throughout history, there are some that obviously have benefited the people and most of them have benefited a select few. And whether you look at socialism or Marxist-Leninism that benefits the 3%, usually the people who are in power, um, it doesn't necessarily start off that way. It doesn't start off as this tyrannical, egalitarian type rule. It starts off as being sold to the citizens as a benefit to all that all boats rise at high tide, so to speak. And it really couldn't be further from the truth because when you look at socialism and you look at the way that works and, and wealth is distributed and how businesses and corporations are ran by the government and individual effort or meritocracy no longer exists, ultimately what you get is a singularity in the government, which is one choice for all and that really sums up progressive movements completely is that it's not necessarily about the individual it removes the individual's choice and it provides that singularity that is the illusion of choice an example would be mercedes-benz in russia it was the only vehicle you could get and it really didn't matter how many jobs you had or how much income you had, you had one choice, which was one vehicle for the people. Unfortunately, not everyone could afford the vehicles in Russia. And even the choice of selling a vehicle wasn't an option because you never truly owned the vehicle. You leased it from the government. And you would go on a waiting list. Ronald Reagan has a wonderful story about this that could take, you know, five, six, seven years in order to receive a vehicle simply because the government slowdown and bureaucracy would make it nearly impossible for the average everyday citizen to be a vehicle owner. And, and this could be no more uh, accurate and well represented, not just in vehicle choices, but even in bread or food, grain, water. I've been collecting stories that are told in the Soviet Union by their people among themselves which reveal they've got a great sense of humor but they've also got a pretty cynical attitude toward their system and i told this one bill you'll have to hear it again i told it in the car i didn't tell this one to gorbachev <laughs> you know there's a 10-year delay delay in the soviet union of delivery of an automobile and only one out of seven families in the soviet union own automobiles there's a 10-year wait, and you go through a, quite a process when you're ready to buy, and then you put up the money in advance. And this happened to a fellow, and this is their story that they tell, this joke, that this man, he laid down his money, and then the fellow he was in, that was in charge said to him, okay, come back in 10 years and get your car. And he said, morning or afternoon. <laughs> and... <clears throat> And the fellow behind the counter said, well, 10 years from now, what difference does it make? And he said, well, the plumber's coming in the morning. <laughs> but with Democrats, they tell us and they contradict themselves in many ways. One of them is that all women need to be believed, right? It doesn't matter. Every woman on the planet needs to tell hashtag her truth the Me Too movement. But we found that wasn't true. Because when Gina Carano or Roseanne Barr or people who accused Joe Biden of sexual assault, we didn't believe those women. In fact, we don't care anything about those women. We just want them to be quiet and not say a word according to the Democrats. When we see people who are successful and strive in the Democratic Party, which there are plenty, and, and recognize themselves as liberal, these people are splashed on magazines and heralded as, as the great white hope 
for everyone to model themselves after and to follow in the footsteps of that person, no matter how they got there or how they acquired their success. But when somebody like Ben Carson, when certain legislators in different, in different counties, in different states, municipalities around the country are successful following Republican ideology and, and more conservative ideology in the Republican platform, these people are Uncle Toms or sellouts and they're ridiculed like in this video. Sometimes when people are so privileged, they want to think that equality and privilege is equal. It's not. I wonder what did it take for you, sir, to get elected out of St. Charles to sit in your seat? I want to hear that story. Yeah, I had to uh, work on my own merits and uh, pretty much promote the principles I believe in, which is freedom equality for all, which I believe that America does. And that's how I got elected into my position. I didn't get elected into my position because of the color of my skin or doing any, any race baiting stuff that it seems like you're promoting here. Oh, I'm promoting race baiting. I'm promoting race baiting. No, I think you're promoting privilege, tokenism, I didn't, I didn't come from a privileged background. Oh, really? I, I grew up in St. Louis where, County where, where my mother was Where did was you grow up at? Tell over me that. In, in, in Overland is where I grew up <laughs> in Overland. It wasn't a, wasn't a uh, uh, privileged family at all. Uh, my father passed when I was 12. My mom raised me and three, uh, two of my other brothers. Uh, she was lower, lower income. I had to work my butt off to get where I am today and to- Shame on you. Lady, your time has expired. Some other examples are looking at Tesla's CEO, Elon Musk, who was considered to be the pauper prince of electronic vehicles and PayPal and, and wants to go to Mars. And they said that he was an amazing human being that was solving the problems with the environment and Greenpeace loved him and Democrats loved him and Silicon Valley loved him. And they wanted a, an Apple and Tesla baby so they could have the two kings rule the world of Elon Musk and Tim Cook. And Bezos probably would have come in there and been the bastard child at some point. But alas, Elon Musk finally said, wait, I don't like the way these policies and progressive ideologies make me feel. I don't agree with these things. I believe in free market capitalism. I believe that the government shouldn't run everything. I believe in free thought. And of course, he took the side of somebody else besides the Democratic Party and their followers. He took the side of Elon Musk, which is really what this whole experiment in the Constitution and the Constitutional Republic is is really protecting the rights of the individual, not the collective, not the masses. Elon Musk, if he wants to buy Twitter and he has the money, well, then he should. And remember, he was considered to be the modern day sliced bread for the Democrats and was a billionaire. Nobody questioned his wealth. Nobody questioned and asked for distribution or to he need to pay more taxes. In fact, most of the Silicon Valley companies and big tech companies were, are always left off the list. But as soon as Elon Musk questioned the narrative, he became a traitor to the cause and he was cast out. It's kind of like the days of Charlemagne. It doesn't make any sense. Why would the Democrats who have a CEO who wants to bring balance to Twitter, wants to continue to make electronic vehicles, wants to go past the confines of space, why wouldn't they say, well, difference of opinion, but we still appreciate what he's doing? Well, because they don't care. See, it's also an example if you look at the inner cities. Let's take an example, Gavin Newsom. Gavin Newsom likes to go ahead and say that murder rates at eight out of the 10 top states are red states. And guess what? He's right. And when you're a surface level thinker and you don't peel back the onion or peel off the skin of the banana, you're gonna get a bunch of rind. And that's exactly what you have here. What he fails to mention 
is that 37 out of the 50 top most deadly cities, three of them being the top most deadly cities in the world, right, the world, are ran by Democrats. And the large amount of population are obviously in the cities. So how is a place like Georgia or Louisiana or Alabama, which obviously have very large cities that make up most of the population, that do the most crime, the most homicide, like most cities do, well, how is that the state's responsibility? Gavin Newsom's answer, he has a new one, which is simply take out the cities and go ahead and look, and then you have red leading the homicide for the states. Well, sure, when you cherry pick stats, of course that's gonna be the result. So what you're saying is, is we have to remove all the cities that are blue, and then what's remaining will be the responsibility of the Republicans. Trust me, we wish we can do that, but unfortunately that's not the way that numbers work. This is the problem. Democrats talk about wanting to stop gun violence. Well, if they did, they would clean up their cities. They would try to go ahead and solve problems of minorities and solve the problems in the inner cities by bringing in jobs, creating the railroad track philosophy. That, that means that this side of the tracks has to be poor and impoverished, and this side of the track is the rich elitists. We have to remove those demarcation lines in value. We have to have people go into the inner city and on the fringes and create jobs so people can do more than just deal crack or have children endlessly. This happened in Five Points in Denver, Colorado, a very tough area where a lot of the homicides took place. And what you found was they went in, they cleaned it up, they rehabbed the area, brought new business in, and now it's one of the most prolific small towns in Colorado. It doesn't take a lot. But see, the issue is why would Democrats want to fix the problems from minorities when the entire basis of the Democratic Party is to expand government? It's also to have people be dependent on government. This is why you raise taxes, get more money, go ahead and reinvest into the inner cities just enough to keep them hooked. Now, I'm not a big LBJ fan, but I will paraphrase here, and I can't use the words that he used because he dropped the N-bomb, but LBJ was quoted as saying, we're going to give those blanks, N-words, just a little taste of success. We're gonna go ahead and give them uh, money from the government. We're gonna help them with their food, and just enough to keep them happy and fed, but not necessarily prolific and prosper under our rule. And once we give them that taste, those N-words will be ours forever. The policy hasn't changed. The initiatives haven't changed. And there is a reason why over the last 75 years, these cities remain under democratic control because the threat of losing welfare and government subsidies is always looming over their head. And instead of teaching people with a way up, we teach them how to stay down. Democrat policies have not been successful in the inner cities. And the reason why is because the individual is left behind for the collective. And as we started this conversation out about progressivism and socialism, that everyone gets equal portions of everything, yes, that's true. They also get equal portions of nothing. Thanks for watching tonight. We will be on at 8 o'clock. Share, like, and subscribe if you like this at The Dumb Show. I will, actually, I'm not 8 o'clock live. Tonight is the Stanley Cup. So this is all you get for today, but I will see you tomorrow live at 8 o'clock and also a recorded show. Stop by thedumbshow.com for some cool hats and shirts. Get Be a member of The Dumb Nation if you would not mind on Facebook. For $1.99, you get 15% off the store. God bless. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time on The Don't Unfriend Me Show.